As this previous summer came to an end, I found myself watching a lot of Emma Chamberlain. Over the years, I had heard of her a few times, initially when she released the clothing merchandise and had a controversy because the product pictures were pixelated. Her videos have changed a lot since then, and I personally admire her current editing style and casual tone. It feels relaxing to watch her make coffee and go on a run by the beach. That being said, I didn't know that her dad was an artist until she mentioned it in one of her recent videos. It's crazy to me how not artistically inclined I am. It blows my mind. Like, my own father is an artist. That is his passion in life. That is his job. He's my dad. After seeing him in her Louis Vuitton fashion show vlog, I wanted to find out what type of art he makes. Emma is a very popular creator, and she admires her dad for his skill and creativity, so I wanted to know more about him and what he makes. Michael is an impressionist painter based in California. He began painting in 2003 and hasn't stopped since. Learning as he goes, Chamberlain's outlook is learning from mistakes, using them to fuel your growth. Additionally, he shared it in an interview how he was able to greatly quicken his painting process and improve via constant practice. His subjects revolve around nature and everyday life in California. Blocky strokes and soft lighting characterize his work. A lack of harsh contrast originates in the Impressionist movement of the late 19th century, but the thick strokes are Michael's. Comparing Chamberlain's rocks and waves to Monet's cliff walk at Porville, this technical difference between contemporary Californian Impressionism and the original French is obvious. Despite the age gap, these artworks have striking similar color palettes, showing how Chamberlain's Impressionist technique keeps in touch with the movement's roots. His plain air practice is also rooted in the traditional painting style. On the other hand, he has multiple methodic departures from the 19th century Impressionism. Chamberlain tends to create a flat blue blanket as a sky, while artists like Monet use more shades to add movement. Flattening the world with simplified shapes, it creates a simpler environment compared to the hundreds of tiny strokes in a Monet. This particular characteristic of Michael's is reminiscent of Cezanne's style, who is also influenced by the Impressionists. Looking at side-by-sides of their works into clear by simplifying his paintings in this way, it helps them feel more relaxed and laid back. Kind of a similar feeling one would have if they're going to the beach, which, which is a subject of many of his artworks, or just relaxing at home on a sunny weekend. Many of his paintings show the streets of California, the beach, and suburban life. Personally, my attention is caught by his beach side images where the rough waves crash against the shore. The way he recreates a repeating but unique action with his large rectangular strokes is interesting. Additionally, I enjoy his works where there's a contrast between a dominating cool color scheme and a smaller palette area of warmth. Marshall Point and Sunny Side Up are two examples of this coloring technique. It's like a cool mist enveloping a warm fire. He also draws inspiration from contemporary artists alongside the traditional painters, serving as an example of how interwoven the art world is today. Overall, he does have a lot of really good pieces. They have pleasant color schemes and depict seemingly mundane moments in a more intriguing manner. In my opinion, his depiction of the seashores and food still lifes are his best. His pieces are definitely something that I would like to display in my home, but maybe as a poster instead of the real thing. They're quite expensive. Honestly, if he printed his artworks as stickers and posters or other things like that, I would try and get some, especially if it's of one of his uh, ocean paintings. Like, they look really nice. They would be perfect for a like medium or small poster. I could also see some of his images being put onto backs of t-shirts and hoodies. I think him and maybe Emma should work together on making that merch happen. I think it's a very good route. Which paintings of Michael Chamberlain's do you like the most? What do you enjoy about them? Do you like them for the same reasons I do or is it something different? Please let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this quick journey with me. Please subscribe for more art and art history videos. And I'm about to go on a tangent on something else that isn't related, so if you're sticking around, thank you. If not, I'll see you next time. Also, I wasn't sure where to mention this, but I really wanted to talk about it. In an interview, Michael Chamberlain commented how if social media existed, 
in the days of some of the famous artists like Van Gogh, they would definitely be influencers. The impacts of social media on the art world are complex and interesting, especially with the rise of digital art and NFTs. I've been able to find a lot of talented artists on apps like Instagram and Pinterest, finding it useful for improving my own technique to be able to see so many images and references. I'd like to think that the internet has helped ease the experience of the starving artist and help people who otherwise would have had a small or no following reach much more people and be more successful. But the impacts of plagiarism and people using art museums as like Instagram background photos and not really diving deeper into it are things that I haven't researched and don't really know the full implications of. That's just why I had to say about that. I just thought it was interesting to think about. So thank you. See you next time.